down to some positive reasoning Y'all come on me up Your conscious mind I find enchanting It's not a lost thing It's not a flesh thing I would really like to know you better In you the princess I've got an interest I hope this was don't blow away like powder Alright, okay, I know you heard this before I don't want to try this with them games and score So don't get me wrong I just wanna talk Say y'all come on me on Let's get down to some positive reasoning Y'all come on me on your conscious mind I find so fascinating Y'all come on me on Let's get down to some positive reasoning Y'all come on me on Your conscious mind I find enchanting Girl I'm waiting Hear me when I'm calling we can learn from one another, yeah We can edify each other, yeah If not today, some other day So much I wanna see Say, y'all come on me on Let's get down to some positive reasoning Y'all come on me on Your conscious mind I find so fascinating Y'all come on me on Let's get down to some positive reasoning Y'all come on me on Come on me on Come on me on You're so humble And so charming A smile from you girl is so heartwarming You keep it simple Vanity no move you I love the way that you preserve your temple So don't get me wrong I just wanna talk Say y'all come on me on Let's get down to some positive reasoning Y'all come on me on Your conscious mind I find so fascinating Y'all come on me on Let's get down to some positive reasoning Y'all come on me on Come on me on Come on me on Alright, okay, I know you heard this before I don't want to try this to read them games and score So don't get me wrong I just want to Say y'all come on me on Let's get down to some positive reasoning Y'all come on me on Your conscious vibes are fine so fast Miss Y'all come on me on Welcome back to Island Tea with your faves Kevin and Amali And we are jumping into Espresso I still have to figure out to sing a song for that So I could sing it for you In you know burst your eardrums Oh espresso should be something sexy like 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 es- espresso <sighs> the espresso sound did steam <laughs> espresso <laughs> <laughs> mm. well we are joined by Cle- <laughs> sorry this is stupidness in here so mm. we're joined by clement monarch ogawa welcome thank you very much welcome welcome um for inviting me to island tea mm-hmm. and in the espresso section is it espresso yeah okay our yeah. segments are named after breakfast style th- stuff. So, Sounds you know, impressive. Our, our news segment is called Tea Time. Mm-hmm. And, you know, interviews with like other stuff, eat local, we have espresso. Yeah. Okay. So mm-hmm. I, I like this section. Themed. And then That's we have like one called grind, <laughs> What Grinds Your Gears. Yeah, we have Grind, grind Grinds My gears. gears on Thursday. What Grinds My Gears. So we, we, yes. we come That here. sounds like people complaining. Yes. yes. We just need to. We're just, we're just boozing for half an hour. <laughs> so we, 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 take a, we take about half an hour. Sometimes we extend it and we talk about what grinds our gears and we allow the callers to jump in and tell us what grinds their gears too. Mm, okay. Very much like how we grind the coffee beans to make coffee. Mm-hmm. Mm. True. True. All right. Mm-hmm. Like the concept. Yes. Why not just say like, oh, these crazy people? <laughs> right. He's, he's sitting here like, okay, why well, y'all bring me on this show? <laughs> no, but no, but I mean, you know, shows have to have theme and planning. Right. And it sounds like that's what you guys have done. So Jade. that's Im- that's impressive. The Jade. Oh, really? Jade. Yeah. She's oh. the mastermind. Oh, okay. I wouldn't take credit for Hello. it because. <laughs> <laughs> but you know how we like to do it on on Island Tea is we love to give the the our guests an opportunity to tell the viewers and listeners a little bit about who they are and what it is they do. Mm. 
Well, I do a lot of things. No, 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 no. Except you, that I have a long list to go through. <laughs> except that I haven't done much for the last year that I've been in um, St. Kitts. Um, but I think first and foremost, most people would know me as a Calypsonian. Some people would say former Calypsonian. I started out basically in the Junior Calypso competition back in, wow. Um, yeah, we're going to... That's very easy to do. We're yeah. going to age everybody here right now. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Started out in the Junior Calypso competition when it was initiated back in 1973. And had a pretty good run. Um, pretty good? The, I think you're being humble. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had a pretty good run. Um, I left the Junior Calypso competition at 18, as you're expected to do, um, with four... Four crowns, actually three of them back to back, and, and, three and two first runner ups. Yeah, that three peat was very rare those days. It still is, and so I felt pretty good um, about it. Um, I entered the junior, I'm mean, the senior Calypso competition after that, um, because I actually started to record as well. My final year in the junior Calypso competition, mm -hmm. I started my recording career in um, Trinidad with um, at the Koto who is a legendary musician I'm back in the day well the late Art Dakota but senior calypso competition just wasn't my cup of tea mm -hmm. not even close to island tea mm. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I uh, I decided you know what I, I want to entertain people mm -hmm. and so that's what I started to do I started to make music not necessarily for competition but you know, to, to, to entertain um, folks. And hence, my travels to um, New York regularly during the summer mm -hmm. um, for, for Labor Day. Um, been to, you know, most of the Caribbean islands as well um, in terms of performances. Um, Aruba as well, St. Martin, Anguilla, Trinidad. And a bunch of different places. So that's that's where everything um, everything started, and that's that's where it pretty much almost ended. I left St. Kitts in 1992. Um, you know, based on the fact that uh, people just didn't want to compensate people who actually make the show. Mm -hmm. um, it, it was funny. I mean, they would pay everybody else except the person who, who makes the show. And so, you know, I got tired and sick and fed up of that. Right. And I left and I just went in a totally different direction. I went to the U.S. I went, um, I studied for a while. I um, <clears throat> got involved in um, call, centers, deve call center development. And that took me to um, Houston, Atlanta, uh, Dallas, and then overseas as well for the company that I work. So I spent, what, eight years between the Philippines and Argentina um, doing that. But during the time, of course, I was still interested in, in uh, music, still interested in my country, of course, and wanting to see, um, you know, stuff done. So I've had the option to, you know, do some promotions here and there in Houston and in Atlanta. And that included, of course, bringing some of the artists from here as well to add Rukas, ba um, Bagnell. Mm -hmm. We had K.O., um, who else we had? Michael Summer, mm -hmm. um, Choice One, um, DJ, um, Andre, who is a kitchen living in Dallas right now. Um, so yeah, we've I, I've done that. I've, I'm a member of the, the St. Kitts Nevis Association of Texas. Okay. Um, but I've been here in St. Kitts for um, a year. Mm -hmm. I actually came for Carnival last year and uh, spent a couple months to get some stuff done. And by the time you know it, COVID was here. And I know you migrated back home. <laughs> <laughs> he just <laughs> hasn't left. <laughs> no, but I mean, you know, hey, old folks like me are vulnerable. So I prefer to be in a less vulnerable place, well, which, is, which is St. Kitts. So that's, that's where I'm at. And... Hey, I'm I'm having a blast. I'm having a blast just being being home. I didn't realize it was gonna be a year, but right. it's almost there. Mm. Hmm. I mean, that's 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 so interesting, eh? Like, um, 
how you come, you know, for pretty much like a vacation, <laughs> and then it turns into this this year long this this year long. At least at least like you said, you're you're at home, and um, in a, in a place where you feel comfortable and and safe. Uh, absolutely. I mean, I think that um, you know the authorities here have done a very good job in um, combating the rise of um, COVID, and so. Um, unlike, you know, Houston, where I, I reside, I mean, uh, you know, fortunately, everybody there is fine. Mm -hmm. I haven't had any anybody that's close to me that's been affected in, in any negative way. So so that's that's good, both here and, and there. So that's good. Yeah, definitely. But Manak, um, mm -hmm. one, one of the things that is that you're known for are you, when your name comes up a lot, Mm -hmm. is your involvement in, in local carnival, um, having held the position of chairman. Um, I think that's where we might have, um, you know, we might have actually gotten closer. Over, Correct. Right? Correct. We we did a lot of work together back then. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's, what, 10 years ago? Yeah, and, and, the, and your involvement also in, like, the Sokoman Act development and, and, and being, a, like, a force for that and all that. Correct. But, um... You know, right now, that's a big talk. Um, what's going on? Like we just spoke about COVID, and carnival is something that persons are very concerned about and interested in and trying to figure out what carnival is going to be. But um, what's been your your take? Because you generally come home and, 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 and just, you know, for the, for the carnival time, what's been your impression of, um, you know, the development of, can of carnival over the last um, couple of years, as well as where do you see it going um, in, in time to come. Well, no, <laughs> 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 no. <laughs> well, as, as a former chairman of carnival and an advocate for soca music and just to blow my own horn, um, for now, um, sugar mass was my original creation. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm the one who walked into the um to the committee and said, "Hey, let's do this. Um this is the name we're going to go by. Uh mimicking, you know, Spice Mass and some of the other names that um Vinci Mass mm -hmm. um that was that was called um that that was used for um the different islands." Mm -hmm. Um <clears throat> and so Monarch was wavering back and forth. I don't think they know the, the people in charge knew exactly what they were doing. Mm -hmm. It was a free show. It was down the ferry terminal. It was all over the place. Mm -hmm. And I think it was called I, the Party Monarch. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. as someone who saw what was happening in um, Trinidad, the Mecca, and some of the other islands, St. Lucia, Grenada, um, St. Vincent, Barbados, what was happening, I figured, well, why are we not, why are we not in on this market? Mm -hmm. Right. So as the chairman of Carnival, I went to the minister who was uh, Marcelo Leibert at the time and <clears throat> said, yeah, I, I want 10000 as the prize money for Soka Monarch. Mm -hmm. And that's where the recreation um, came from as I um, served on the, the committee um, with us. Shannon was my deputy um, in, in, the car in the Carnival Committee, and she also um, played a big role as well in, in, in the Soka Monarch. And so I, I guess I call that the rebirth. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we went, you know, we went to some decent, very, very decent standards. But for the last couple of years, um, the show just took a dive. Um, guys decided that they didn't want to be part of it. And, you know, for various reasons, I'm, you know, I don't want to get into all those reasons. I, I knew when the controversy started, w there was one line that I said, and I think people misunderstood mm -hmm. what I said and th thinking that, well, maybe he's on one side or the other. Um, when the controversy um, started back in 2015, that's when you had a new carnival chairperson, mm -hmm. Noah took over. I said on the radio that the Calypsonians or the soca artists need to just shut up and sing. Mm -hmm. And I think mm -hmm. they, they, they probably thought that I was telling them, you know, forget about whatever your gripes are. Mm -hmm. Just go sing regardless to what. No. What I was telling them is that you got the mic. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. You got the audience listening to you on the night of the Calypso finals, not the committee members. So use use your you use, use the platform. Use the platform. E- exactly, use the platform. you you the writer, mm-hmm. <laughs> you the singer. So use that platform to tell the audience in a funny way. How you feeling? Yeah? Exactly. That mm-hmm. was exactly my point, and I I think it went over some people's heads. So mm-hmm. I apologize if you know. Hey, mm-hmm. people misunderstood me. Um, but that's where I was um, coming from. But I'm passionate about um, soca, and as someone who has spent a lot of time um, living overseas, it's painful when you go to um, you know a function and you hear everybody else music except music from St. Kitts and Nevis. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So thank God for a breath of fresh air. Lately, um, you know, broke it, set it, mm-hmm. uh, made it, and it's playing. And of course, the song from um, there's a song from Nevis. Um, a older song. Yes. Um, searching. Searching. Mm-hmm. Yes. That searching will never stop playing overseas. Correct. Correct. <laughs> I mean, you you can go to a session that necess- that do- wasn't necessarily a Saint Kitts Nevis session, and you'd hear that. Mm-hmm. So, that's my passion. I'm I'm looking for the next hit out of Saint Kitts and mm-hmm. Nevis. I'm looking for the next hit because I want to be able to say to my friends in the U.S. in Trinidad mm-hmm. or wherever they are. Hey, this is our music. This is our artists. Just like how we get all the artists come here to perform. Right, right, right. You know, I want us to be able to to do that as well too. And so, um, it seems as if that you know we're we're on the right path. There's a couple of things that has happened this year. I don't know if I should say thanks to COVID or whatever it is, but there's a couple of things that has happened. I think that has you know showed that we're getting ready to go in the right direction. The Ministry of Entertainment, first of all, Mm -hmm. and also um, Pace as well, too, because I think guys need to now understand how important um, this part of our life is. Entertainment, tourism is, I mean, you know, we see it working. Thousands of people came here to see Buja Banton. Mm -hmm. So why can't... We have an artist that go to Antigua or St. Martin or the U.S. and bring that same amount of energy, bring that same crowd, inviting people to come to St. Kitts for Sugar Mass or Music Festival or any of the fets that we do during Carnival as well. Mm-hmm. Right. But, you know, it's it's interesting because we had we had our Wing Wolf Hicks here um, <coughs> on Friday. Okay. I feel, I feel a lot better because he's a little bit older than me. <laughs> 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 but... <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, um, uh-huh. he would have highlighted, and you would have, well, as, as, you, as you started speaking, about the ability for Kittitian-based entertainers to, to, to move around um, the world with, with, with their craft. And that's something that we've seen, in, in my estimation, has kind of slowed down mm-hmm. over the years. Like, how was it you were able to get your music out there recognized overseas and allow you to travel to some of these other markets and stuff like that. Now, how do you think that we could get back to that? I, I, I was fortunate in, in a sense, but it doesn't put me in an exclusive um, group. I was fortunate in the, in the sense that I really, I, I had my own business, so I wasn't, I could leave and go to New York for three months during the summer. And that's what I did. I started recording. I got a good contact in Trinidad. So my first three recordings were done in Trinidad. The first two with Art Dakota. Um, the third one, I took um, the late Kenrick Georges um, to Trinidad. Then mm-hmm. I went to Puerto Rico with Elimat. But after all that, I realized, well, still, you know, hey, I'm, I'm still here in St. Kitts. And so... I can't remember the details. I don't even know what happened. But I knew that I knew from back in the in the day, um, as as young guys. So people like me, Cut, Reggie, um, and some of the other Calypsonians, we knew from back in the day because we followed Antigua, we followed Trinidad. Right. We wanted to be like them, mm. and we went as far. We went as far as one year. I think it was 1975. We were young kids. I have no idea. I was asking Cut the other day, well, where did we get money from <laughs> to do the things that we were aspiring to do? Mm-hmm. Now, there's a lot of land um, next to the pharmacy on Fort next Street. Next to Farm Care. Next to Farm Care. Right, I think Bevan. 
has a thing. Correct, right. correct, yeah. correct. Oh, yes, yes, yes. We s we wanted to be so much like what was happening in some of the other islands. Our Calypso tent tents used to move around to different venues, but in Trinidad and Antigua they had a set venue. So we went to Miss Cansi who owned the land, the land, and that's where we had our Calypso tent. We were, I think I was like twelve or thirteen. Wow. So, so at 12 and 13, you and a couple of the <laughs> youngsters started your own Calypso tent, unfortunately. Yeah, Hot Shot Calypso tent. We, mm -hmm. And we had Hot Shot Calypso tent for years. Mm -hmm. um, as a matter of fact, I was talking to Ellie Matt the other day, and he was reminding me of, um, of that. But so I, I, I said that to kind of contextualize where, where I was going, where in, in 1983, I decided, you know what? <clears throat> New York is the Mecca. I'm I'm going there. I'm going to see what what it is, and so I went. Um, I I went to Brooklyn. I had a couple of friends who knew um, you know certain things, and so me and Star Shield mm -hmm. ended up in the small Calypso tent. This wasn't the big Calypso tent with all the big names. Right. Um, and. From there, things started to, to bubble because you, st you started to meet people now in the business. So networking was a big part of it. Correct. I, I met a, a, ma a, a guy from Grenada, um, and he, was, he had a couple artists that he was managing. Um, you know, he didn't seem as if he was no, you know, big, fancy nothing or whatever <laughs> it is. But I'm like, you know what? You got to start from somewhere. And so I started there. I met him. He took me to a small label who um, remixed and re-released a lot of the music that I had done before. Mm -hmm. um, then they decided to, to, to send me to Trinidad. Mm -hmm. So 1984 um, was the first time I ever missed a carnival in St. Kitts. Never felt so crazy in my life. <laughs> I mean, I was in Trinidad and... <coughs> I know. Keep on You all are our fit spirit brothers. I miss one and I nearly, but I literally I, had tears I, in my eyes. It, it was the worst feeling in my life. Back then we had AM radio. And mm. so yeah, AM radio, yeah, AM radio. Who is this guy? <laughs> <laughs> Old enough to know all these things. <laughs> but um, yeah, we had AM radio and so we could pick up. 610 radio in Trinidad here in St. Kitts. That's how we used to listen to the Calypso competition. Mm -hmm. And we picked up ZIZ in Trinidad as well. Um on, on the AM band. So yeah, it was it was it was tough. But when I went to Trinidad um singing in the Mighty Sparrows Calypso tent and doing um, you know, different shows here and there, um I was introduced because my handlers knew the people in the business. Right. I was introduced to Winsford Devines. Mm. And for those who don't know, Winsford Devines has written all the biggest yep. calypsos. Well, not all, but Master writer. majority of the biggest calypsos out of Trinidad. And he mm. gave me an idea, and we worked on it together, and it turned out to be um, Selfish Tongue. Yeah. Went back to New York. Uh, my, my manager said, hey, I think this song is good enough to go on a bigger label. Let's, you know, we don't have a contract with the small label, so let's move on. And we went to Bees, which was one of the biggest labels, Bees along with Charlie's in, in, um, on, in Brooklyn. Um, and they loved the song. They immediately said, yes, yes, yes. We signed a contract, and we did the recording. Frankie McIntosh, um, top arranger, did the music. And that was it. They knew mm -hmm. they knew how to get the music um, to where it needed to go. WLIB was the big radio station, the big Caribbean and soca station at the time in New York, and selfish tongue all over that. Selfish tongue all over, including six weeks on the charts, which was ten, um, ten songs. Um, they've put it on their compilation, the best of bees, and it's also on another compilation out of um, Canada on Ronda Records. And to me, one of the biggest things was when it was chosen as a song that was played on American Airlines, New York to Puerto Rico flight in the Caribbean sec section. So right. mm. pretty, pretty impressive. Um, then right after that, I think a year after that, um, or right around the same time, I was approached by um, Buell Bart, who is a, was a journalist at the time, lives in Antigua now about um, the BBC coming to St. Kitts to do um, a film. 
he was the first person who told me. I mean, it's kind of there's like a, a lot of con well, not a lot, but some controversy. People thinking, well, okay, they're the ones who alerted me first. But my recollection is that he alerted me. Right. Um, and so I was introduced to the folks from the BBC, um, Carol Phillips, who is a kitchen. Um, he was he was the script writer that they hired, mm -hmm. and he was to write a script. Um, he could have chosen any island he wanted to, but he chose St. Kitts because that this is where he's from, down in um, St. Paul's. And so I ended up getting the job to do the film as well called Lost in, Lost in Music that, you know, went pretty much, um, you know, BBC, BBC Worldwide. So as I'm saying, I mean, I, was, I think I, that I was fortunate. I don't think a lot of our guys are... Um, as fortunate in having their own business so they could just take off and go to New York and say, you know what, I'm going to spend the summer, mm -hmm. I'm going to get in on the low end, I'm probably not going to make any money, but at least I'm going to get my name, I'm going to get my so name known. Good, yeah, yeah right. and um, I mean, to me, the bottom line is that what you have to do is you have to just give away your music um, mm -hmm. initially because nobody's coming to sign no artists for no big amount of money. Um, these days, I mean, three years ago, Motto was in Houston, you know, knocking around trying to get something done, and look at Motto today. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Look at look at Motto mm -hmm. today. So. So you have uh, to take that step. Correct, right? and Believe I, I think yeah. it, it's not that we don't have the ability or the talent or the songs here. I mean, come on, look at Sticker Rhythm. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, Brock it set it. Mm -hmm. Um, Bad Mind People or whatever right. the name of the song from last yeah. year. Speaking eight, of them. Exactly. Eight, six, nine. I mean, there was so much music that we have here um, that can go and match with any any of the music out there. Music. But right. we, we need to we need to get it out there. We we need to get it out there and the the government is gonna have to help, the Ministry of Culture, the Ministry of Entertainment is gonna have to help because they're helping in a lot of different islands. Um our own um Pumper Right. Was right, at the right, Miami right. Carnival last year. Mm -hmm. Virgin Islands Tourism um, sponsored it. They were scheduled to have a big show in Houston again, um, tourism um, related that he was on as well. Um, so we need to start doing. We need to start doing things like that. I and mean, it, you know, we got how, how many people on the parkway? Um, millions of people on the parkway millions, every year. Right. Millions. It don't cost three thousand five hundred US to put a band on the road. It costs you twenty something thousand. So right. that's what you got to put in. You can't give somebody three thousand five and expect them to yeah. Uh, expect them to 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 create this big impression on right, on right, the parkway. Right. Mm -hmm. But mean, the thing, but the thing about it, uh, Monarch, is that the, the the money is spent um anyway, right? Um, <laughs> and so and so we start looking at we start looking at value. What's the value we we getting out of these these um inputs? Exactly, and I prefer to send a, two artists to to Miami for Carnival or New York for Carnival than to wrap a bus in England and pay them uh, ten thousand dollars a month, month. or yes. whatever it costs. Yes. I mean, you know. Yeah, no, um, Las Vegas. I've seen them. <laughs> Follow your heart. <laughs> yeah, I've seen them myself. And in the Middle East. Yeah, I mean, I don't have any problems with them doing that. We got billboards in Dubai and so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but maybe, maybe what we need to do is a combination, because entertainment, right. entertainment, tourism. I mean, I can see, I can see, um, entertain, entertainment bringing people here. Of course. Um, we used to have back in the day when we had the big bands, Ellie Matt, um, and and um, the brass and all those guys. We used to be able to bring people here from all the islands right around, right, right. around us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was chairman. I was chair, chairman of Carnival, and in January, um, uh, ABS in Antigua called me to do an interview, and DJ Blandell tell me, "Listen, I don't have one song from St. Kitts, hmm. not one song." And to me, that was so so disappointed. We used to actually make physical records back in the day. Right. We used to make physical hmm. records, and we used to actually. We used to find somebody going to Antigua to take them to ZDK and ABS, the Virgin mm -hmm. Islands. Um, yeah, I mean, I've heard stories of the bands going up to the airport and say, "Oh, you're going, you're going to St. Thomas." <laughs> Drop <out> easy, <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> that that's the way. I mean, and we we didn't have studio. We didn't have studios here until '87 when yeah, Adrian, Adrian Lamb, when yeah. Adrian brought um, the studio here. 
Um, previously, we had to record. I recorded in what Puerto Rico, Trinidad, Saint Thomas, um, New York. <coughs> So everywhere yeah. uh, until Adrian um, recorded us in in eighty seven, when when he brought the studio here. So tell us a story about that um, that, that that studio and, and and the recording that that first came out of that uh, that studio. Well, I'll be honest with you. Adrian decided with Tucan to to get into Calypso, and you know back in the then we were back in the days we were very territorial because mm. I remember. I remember, you know, saying, why are you trying to get in Calypso? All of, all of a sudden now he wants to get into Calypso. They, he, they were known as a, like more of a, what we'll call now a hotel band, right? Correct, correct, yeah. correct. And more, you know, the, the, the kind of different. But I'm like, you know, okay, fine. So I can't tell you the story how I ended up in the tent. But I believe it comes from the fact that um, me, I'm from Boyd's. Adrian's parents own Fayview Inn. Mm -hmm. And so we grew up as family. Right. I think I'm the only one in my family who never worked at Fayview. Oh, wow. Ev everybody else in my family, all my brothers and sisters probably did. Yeah. And that's because I left home at an early age. I wanted to pursue things. And they had no bus and stuff going to the country late at night. So mm -hmm. I, <laughs> I moved to Tongue where everything was happening. But I think because of um, my kinship with Adrian... I decided to to sing in his Calypso tent, and so hey, the first time we ever get paid, I ever get paid to sing in a Calypso tent. So thank you, Adrian. <laughs> um, you know, and and then um, <clears throat> in '87, I guess Adrian saw because he he was one of the bands back. The way how they did the Calypso, the band for the Calypso finals is the band with the most finalists got to play. For the Calypso competition. Mm -hmm. right. Lately, they just do the two bands or whatever it is. Um, but back in the day, the band with the most finalists got to play. So Adrian got the most finalists in um, in 86. And so I guess he saw progress and he decided, you know what? Nobody recording artists. Nobody recording the artists here. And so he decided to introduce the studio. The studio came late. Everything was finished late. Because we had already he, we had plans already to do our individual recordings. What eventually happened because it was so late, Adrian decided, you know what? Let's do a compilation. So we did um, we did two two albums, um, two albums. Star Shield was on it. Um, Lala was on it with the big song. Ah, in in no hurry. <laughs> with nobody yeah. <laughs> yeah that was on it um contender was on it i was on it who else can't remember who else but there was quite a few people on the album and the album was very successful successful enough that when the carnival was done and when everybody was uh, i mean adrian surprised everybody by calling us in again and paying us from um from record sales now, I know one of the things that people are talking about a lot here is publishing of music. Right. And I'm going to use that particular song because the song that I had on that album was a song that I made for the junior high school. Um, I used to, as a former competitor in the junior high school Calypso competition, they used to invite me back to sing as a guest when they had their little queen show and stuff mm -hmm. every year. And so I wrote the song then, I changed it up and I recorded it for Carnival. It's called Jump Carnival Jump. And going back to publishing, now I got introduced to publishing from a very early age. So as a teenager, actually, because I started to record as a teenager. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I got sucked into it. BMI was the closest one to us or the one that I was introduced to. And so I recall, I, I, I um, registered all my music. All my music was published, including Jump Carnival Jump, which I didn't think was going to make anything. Right. But guess what? I got a check. <laughs> <laughs> I got a check. So it's just, it's just, I'm just, you know, showing the guys here how important it is. Now, I know some people have had issues with Echo, um, you know, and... But regardless to what, you gotta have your you gotta have your music published. In right. the '80s, I went around um, me and um, a, a lawyer friend of mine, who's now he's from here but lives lives in um, New York right now. And 
we realized that all the none of the big bands, none of the big bands in Sun Kids basically owned any of their music because they didn't publish it. Yeah, they didn't register it or anything. So anybody, anybody could have used the music. I mean. Mm -hmm. Just recently, one of Elimat songs that they played back in the day, um, a Calypso Rose, um, what is it, Going Down San Fernando, mm -hmm. or whatever it yeah. is, yeah, mm -hmm. um, was it was on a compilation album. And I can tell you, it wasn't Elimat and them who made the money from it. It was the person who owned the recording wow. right. and, and published it. So Yeah, so it's important for the artists to really get the, biz the business side of the, 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 the music going because... I mean, I, I could imagine even songs like Selfish Tongue and so for you would have definitely brought back in something, I would imagine. Still does. Still does. <laughs> so it, it's, it's important. It, it's very, very important. I don't know. I hear the music in the background. Mm -hmm. oh, we going to a commercial break no, or something? No, no, no. <laughs> oh, no, just, just, say, just serenading thing. me? Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, well guess what? You actually well, have a caller. You don't want to take a call? Yeah. Um, yeah, why not? Okay, caller, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, fellow. Good morning, guys. Good morning. I just want to tell you that Coach was on the album too. Who? With Bob. Oh, yes, 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 the yes, yes, the yes, the yes, yes. All right, yeah. good. All right, that's, All right, my, then. that's my neighbor yeah. in Boyd's, Mr. Politics. So. <laughs> 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 Actually, um, now that he mentioned it, that year um, there was a tie for the road match, the first time that it ever happened between Contender and coach yeah and so adrian really i mean you know we 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 were the big b bad boys at the time when it comes to the calypso 10 even though i had my early apprehension about you know hey why are you trying to get in this business you want to mm. make some money or what mm. but um yeah i mean you know same the same the american i heard that both of them <laughs> same thing i hear the mention the song too <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, oh but 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 no. Um, I I I really want to encourage. I think we got a lot of talent here. I think we got a lot of talent in in um in Saint Kitts. I, you know, I had the the opportunity to, as I say, work with Rukas, Craig, and Mr. Bagnall in in Houston. And mm -hmm. you could you could see we went to um we did two two functions actually it was the Saint Kitts Nevis Association um Independence function. And also, Dominica had a big um, picnic the next day, and so we, we they performed mm -hmm. at the Dominica picnic as well. And I mean, you know, break the ho break the house down, yeah, break man. the house down. So Rukas in uh, Miami, along with uh, my brother um, Ko, Ko, yeah, or AKA Kibo, <laughs> as people know him as, and um, yeah, the same thing, um, you know. So I know this year there's no Soka Monarch, and I'm. I don't know. I'm beyond disappointed. Yeah. Beyond disappointed. I've spoken to Shannon about it, so <laughs> I'm not going to belabor the point. <laughs> we, we, we've had our discussions ab about that because, um, you know, no, I mean, I, I really think that we have enough talent. We have the ability. We have the music here to make um, an impression, to make an impression out there. And, mm -hmm. and we need to. We, we definitely need to. Yeah, it's the point that you made about um, the, the, the the input from the governments with, in, in regards to moving the artists around. Um, I think it's, it's huge um, for persons who would never who've never gone and seen the the, the parade in in Miami and, and the stage afterwards. Mm -hmm. They don't. Other people don't recognize what's happening is the governments that are sending the artists there. You know. Mm -hmm. The government is who fund the artists. Correct. Mm -hmm. So most of the artists are paid for by their local tourism boards, and they go there with the ex the explicit responsibility of promoting the island and promoting the carnivals and stuff like that. Yeah, the music. Right. Yeah. There's only a few of the artists that are paid for by the actual organizers with Miami Carnival, which would be normally the the headliner. You know. Right. Correct. So correct. I mean, other islands are seeing the value in in, in investing in in, in in artists and moving yeah. artists around. And and that's that's what they do. I mean, one year 50th anniversary independence for Jamaica and Trinidad. It was Marshall versus Byron Lee, yeah, um, headlining the uh, Miami Carnival. Atlanta does a lot of that as well too. I know Small Axe have been in Atlanta mm. quite a few times, but I don't know nothing lately. Our bands used to go to the Virgin Islands as well because Virgin Islands was huge. I mean, for me, it was as well. One of the things that I didn't mention is that at a very, very young age, 
I got an opportunity to perform in what they used to call the Cool Calypso Tent in, in St. Thomas. Mm -hmm. And Cool Calypso Tent was a year, I mean a week, I mean, and it had all the top Calypsonians from Spiro come all the way down to me because I consider myself like last on the list. Um, you know. <laughs> no, 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 no. I meant the youngest. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> See, Amali trying to trap you. trying to trap you, eh? I know. <laughs> I was trying to boast him. I said, that's no, 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 terrible. No, no. Don't, don't talk about it. I, I like know that. what I said earlier, but I'm a student of communication, so. <laughs> <laughs> Shut but, up and sing, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I'm tempted, you know. You should put on a shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. I'm, I'm very tempted this year, but. No, I want to, I don't know. I want to stay on the side of actually helping the guys. Yes, did, didn't you? Yeah, um, I, I want to stay on the side of helping the guys. Speaking, um, of, speaking, of, speaking of helping, mm -hmm. um, you spoke about, you mentioned your brother, um, K.O., mm -hmm. who for the last two carnivals have, has come home and, and contributed in a big way to the, to the music here. And I think he's entered the Soka Manak the last two years at least. Yeah. Right? Like, how do you see, like, the, like because... A lot of people don't recognize, you know, that it's a real big investment and thing to come from, come back home to compete in in, in the competitions. It know. is. What's what's the what's your influence um, in, in terms of his music and tell people about what it really takes to to come back home and compete and it, should we encourage more artists to do that? Because I don't know if you remember, there was this guy, the Soka Indian or something like that. He was from from England. Yeah, he came the year that. To, um, 2010, he was there the year we were there for Soka Mana. Yeah, he came from England to compete. Correct. He, he, I don't even think he ever lived here. It's his, no, his parents, no, his parents were from his here. His parents were from St. Kitts, and he mm -hmm. heard we were having a Soka Mana and, and, and funded himself, everything came home to compete. So talk about KO, your influence there. Well, the influence came from a long time ago. Eh? We, for some strange reason, um, my father had a lot of cheering. My Some father. strange reason. <laughs> <laughs> he was a taxi driver, so a lot of free rides. <laughs> oh um, my God. <laughs> Communication is key. <laughs> I know. And hey, he was a musician. But it yeah. seemed as if that as the, the outside children would... <laughs> <laughs> it seems as if the outside children are the ones that got the musical talent. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know from, what he was doing, man. <laughs> from a very young age, I'm I'm a MacMaster. Just just in case people, um, you know, want to <laughs> know, it was MacMaster, the, the taxi driver, and Chanel, MacMaster. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's my niece actually. So she's oh, okay, okay, okay. yes. So she's you know part of the the music family as oh. well. A um, friend of the show. Yeah, yes, yeah, yes. yeah. So, um, but we 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 were into music from a very very young age. We created our own band, made our own instruments, and was playing and stuff like that. And so everybody wanted to sing. Now I know you mentioned Ko, but I had another younger than Ko, Wayne. Mm. Um, Wayne actually sang in the Junior Calypso competition um, with with Ko. I mean, they, they they had the village in an uproar because. Some back in Wayne, some back in Kibo, and I mean, you know, yeah. them days, I mean, fans were rabid. So, um, but Kibo came through the ranks. Um, I wrote, wrote a lot, wrote, you know, a couple songs for him. One of the songs people still talk about is a song called Drugs um, that I wrote for him, and he won Junior Calypso competition. As a matter of fact, um, he w he won the Junior Calypso competition the same year that I was in the Calypso um, finals, so I wrote all all four songs um, that year. <laughs> but uh, he he has found a, a nice spot um, moving forward. Now he has found a, ni uh, a nice spot. He always liked music. He went with Ellie Matt, and he started to do some stuff. He did some stuff with Gavin, yeah. um, and Gavin is family as well too. So it's all mm -hmm. in the music. Gavin is um, our cousin. Um, and and so then um he as i said found a good spot with a, a great connection in in barbados where he's now working with the top soca writers soca right. producers um dangerous um you know and those all these guys in barbados and but he's always you know he's always very 
pushy and edgy. I don't know. Maybe he got that from Ellie Matt when he was in, in the band with Ellie Matt. I don't know if he. I don't think he. Got, I don't think he. Well, maybe he got some of it from me as well. Too, but it was. I was about to say. He, yeah, he was kind of you know. So he always wanted to be in the competition. He always wanted his name to be recognized. And you know when he. When he made the the first um, couple songs with these guys, um, the song went down very well. And of course, he got encouraged. I'm like, hey, why don't you, you know, try the Soka Mana? And, and he did. He came back home. Of course, it's an expensive venture because you have to be here for at least the semifinals. Right. So you have to be here from early. And I know um, last year, I think he came in just a couple of days before me. And I came in for the semifinals as well too, mm-hmm. to, to, um, to support him. And it, it's it's very expensive. Yeah, band practice all has Correct. to happen. Yeah. That's the reason why I'm really, 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 really disappointed that the Sokomona prize money is still the same that it was 10 years ago. Mm. $10,000. Come on. Mm. If you want a good show, if you want a good show, you got to step it up to at least twenty, twenty-five thousand because it costs three, four, five, six, seven thousand dollars to put on a really, really good show. And it costs that just to make the song. Correct. And I, I think that that's, that's been one of um, KO's um, issue is that, you know, it's either you're going to spend the money and walk away without anything or you're gonna you know just take it easy you know yeah. come first run up and take whatever money um that you get um I, it seems as if I, a lot of the artists not only here but in trinidad are doing that as well yeah. because i remember the last couple of years that marshall entered this show in trinidad he really didn't put on this million dollar yeah. um production um for for his performance so maybe guys realize that you know what it's better to take some of the money home but we've had that here we've had persons who have won the competition Mm. and end up in the red at the end of it i know and they win that that's that's the that's the 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 worst part of it because to me i always give a joke this is a simple joke it's stupid but you know what it always resonated with me when i went to trinidad to sing in the calypso in the calypso tent down there the second week, um, one of my handlers said to me, you know what, look at, look at all these guys who perform in this week. What do you notice about them? And I couldn't even think of what it is. And he said, all of them got on new clothes. Hmm. All of them got on new clothes. And he said, you know why they got on new clothes? Because they got paid last week. Right. Mm-hmm. So they, they were able to spend money. Mm-hmm. To make to themselves pop, yeah, look better, pop back into and, the performance, and right. exactly. And if that's not gonna happen here, I mean, you know, we're, we're just spinning in mud. We're not really going anywhere. So yeah. I'm passionate about Soka Monarch. Anybody who want, you know, help, assistance, Next year. whatever it is, we yeah, I know. all of us. We're going yeah, in. yeah, yeah. Um, you know, fif- fif- fifty years. Next year is the fiftieth anniversary. Sugar Mouse forty. Now. I mean, fifty. So yeah, um, I think I think that it can work. Yeah, so I we mean, are ready. We are going in for, for we are we are submitting. <laughs> I'll be, yeah, man, definitely. <laughs> Jay, what's song name? I don't got my song. Wow. So Jay, Jay, song name maybe. No, we already have the song. My song name Splish Splash. Splish Splash. I don't got the chorus. Splash. I don't got the chorus down. Okay. I'm well, so serious. Preview? You know, once upon a time, I was gonna, I, I was you, considering it. How you gonna yeah? get? How you gonna get the water on the stage? You don't worry about that. Okay. <laughs> I don't got the plan. I don't got. I don't got. You got the plan. I don't got the kiddie pools in the boxes. Uh uh-huh. Yeah. Be oh, ready. Okay. <laughs> yeah. 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 They've yeah. had. We've had. Who's that one group with y'all? Sorry. 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 I don't got to split my own finish with this. No time. Why we just don't all win? I know. So well, well, next year we get all the prizes. No, next next <laughs> year is um a big year, so I'm assuming that 50th? I'm assuming that they're gonna do like when we the millennium year, the millennium right. year, the Calypso Monarch, um won twenty five thousand as That'd as well so as good. the Queen Show. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, the Queen the, Show on a car too, right? The, the Queen. Yeah, I think, right. but it was big prizes for yeah, the millennium prizes. year, yeah. so. Um, hey, hint, hint, Shannon. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll have five easy for Jay. I'm going to be coming. I'll have yeah. five easy for, for, for Jay. Five easy, yeah. Right after. I know I'm going to buy with it. Jay, right after. I know I can buy with it. Ah, But it was a pleasure being here. Um, you know. But did someone enter that, that, that the show was finished? 
Huh? How you gonna wrap up this show? That some pill that that that, that we finish. <laughs> oh, okay. I would. I will let him in. I'm looking at the clock. That clock ain't concerning you. That clock ain't concerning <laughs> no, me. <don't> <laughs> uh, so we put it up there for you to not watch it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, I'm boy. sorry. I'm sorry for being so presumptuous. <laughs> <laughs> you see, but you see, that's what happens on this show. You get so comfortable uh, that you just think it's yours, but yeah, it's really yeah, not. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> So, so, so I'm glad I have my own show. <laughs> Whoa! Boom, bam. No, 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 no. Fire by. No, but here. but I've um no I've watched the, I've watched I've watched the show, um, mm. you know from from time to time whenever I'm up this early in the morning. Must be nice. I still struggling. <laughs> I, I am. I I don't think. Yeah, I don't I don't know. This has been a, a crazy year for me. And I've been, you know, waking up whatever time I feel like. I don't think I've ever had this prior to um, becoming an adult. I'm very really happy for you. Uh, <laughs> you know, so, so yeah. I mean, it's. But I'm, I've listened to the show. I like, I like the way, um, you know, I like the mix. Mm -hmm. it, it's different, and I'm always looking for um, uniqueness. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's that's what I'm looking for. I'm not looking for sameness because mm -hmm. it's easy to do sameness. It's mm -hmm. easy to just copy. Yeah, and peace yeah um you know so i like i like the idea and of course you know me and azem go um we go, we go way back way you back know, like you know you know I can't see it. <laughs> you know when i was talking like uh like he was <laughs> almost a general manager or something for <laughs> for media host <laughs> talking almost like that he didn't mention that in his interview but. Uh, well oh yeah yeah i actually was i was um general manager at that i said from 92 2013 to 2016, and I, yeah, I think we did some good stuff there. Yeah, man. Um, you know, but I'm also, um, you know, friends of um, of WinFM. Definitely. Mm -hmm. um, Tony mm -hmm. Fredericks is um, a family, and mm -hmm. Bacchus is a pretty um, a pretty good friend. Mm -hmm. So I've done a lot of um, broadcasts for them as well. I oh, just brilliant. I just love to do stuff. You Media know what things. I mean? Mm -hmm. Anything that's anything yeah. that's gonna promote my country, and I love the entertain because. To me, entertainment tourism is so, 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 so big. I think we're missing out on it right now. Entertainment Definitely. tourism is huge. I mean, why do they think they had 14,000 people um, at the at the um, stadium for Buja Bantan here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know it wasn't all Ketitians and Divisions. <laughs> <laughs> You know, yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah, so, yeah. They, I mean, we see it. We we have the evidence. Mm -hmm. yeah. We have the evidence that it works. So, stop making sense, Monarch. What's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. We have the. We have. Country, like, sense. I know. We have the evidence <laughs> that it works. So. Yeah. Our dollars. Uh, yeah. I mean, I don't know why we're so resistant to it. And it's not any. It's not any hit against any one particular government. Or industry. It's a yeah. hit against everybody because over the years that's that's what it's been it's been neglected how dare you <laughs> use your brain that's right? exactly what it is i mean <laughs> you know when when somebody can disappoint me to the fact and this is somebody that i know can disappoint me to the fact to say oh yeah you yeah, all need to go get a real job mm -hmm. hey what marshall doing mm -hmm. what is a real job <laughs> what swallow did mm -hmm. right what what obstinate did? What what did, did? <laughs> and that's the thing. What is a real job? A real job must be behind a desk. Yeah. In that's, a in a that's, tie that's, and that's slave that's, mentality. Buddy. That's what some people. Slave mentality. That's what some it's people disgusting. feel. Yeah. No, because what it is to me is that they telling me, oh yeah yeah yeah, you only worth two thousand five hundred dollars a month. Mm -hmm. You ain't worth two point five million. Right. Right. But look how many people around the globe. Well, forget about around the globe, around the Caribbean. Yeah. Right Maybe next to us. Yeah. Right next yeah. to us. Look what Charles Marshall do. Exactly. Charles Marshall went and put, put himself on Uber, recorded his music video on Uber, mm -hmm. and now look at the guy. Mm -hmm. Made a personality turn to <coughs> so called superstar. Yep. Yeah. And, and making, Over a couple months. And making right. big Both hits. in November and by January, the man just like. Big huge. superstar. And, and making big hits as well, too. Making big hits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, and you're talking about Uber. I mean, we saw the last Uber, um, the pictures from the last Uber, and mm -hmm. they don't, unless, unless I was just seeing Senkit's people picture, mm 
<laughs> is that it looked like we had the yeah, biggest okay. influence <laughs> yeah. the on the boat. <laughs> think it's over talk. Yeah. We had the biggest influence on, on the boat. The whole nation was on the boat. Exactly. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I was happy to hear Music Festival was partnering with partnering with them. Oh yeah, or, or this year would have been fantastic. So that yeah, because I mean, hey, we had a group in Houston planning to go. Um, um, because we, we kept looking at it every year and it's like, okay, no, 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 no. Them New York people ain't, and Miami people ain't going to do us this time. <laughs> and so, you know, we actually, decided that we were going to... Actually, on the boat, you know, we did on the boat. Mm. Whenever we, they would have DJs and artists that would take the stage, you know, they would list out Caribbean countries. You know, we're Grenada, we're St. Vincent, we're Trinidad and Tobago, and yeah. thing, and we'll leave saying it. When they come off stage, we actually used to go backstage and say, watch now, next time, because I think his name. Uh, gangster yeah. the people on the boat. Yeah, yeah boy. Yeah, gangster. Yeah, yeah. yeah boy. No, and, but, and but then and then a couple of times they play Akai song and say big up the VI. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah. had to school them again. School them. School them. Back to the what not. Yeah. But and then and, and yeah. then but actually when I say then apologize at Juve when, when he went to Grand Cayman or wherever he was. Uh-huh. Went and apologize <laughs> to the whole crowd. He said, Lord, I said this song was something and it's yeah. saying it's big up the saying it's people. <laughs> it ain't happened again, blah blah blah. Yeah. yeah. No, no, no. But, <laughs> but, 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 but Patrice Roberts, she made a video on um, the Uber Cruise for a song called "I See You, I See You." Mm-hmm, yeah. And ninety-five percent of the video, in ninety-five percent of the video, you'd see a Sankit's flag. Yes. Yeah, yeah, they sing his flag all over that video, and it happens mm-hmm. more like all you know. Over the video. You see lots of what's it called lately? Like you know, you'll see the the feds happening in New York mm-hmm. or you know the Miami and stuff, and you'll always see a massive sink its flag in the crowd. Correct, correct. So, we no, everywhere. but but you know what? Even with that though, I don't think that we get the the respect that we deserve, and I think as soon as we get an artist out there to compete with them. Who can mention Senkits every time they get on the stage? Yeah. Oh, it's all that's right. that's when we're gonna get the um the the respect. Now we we do get it, you know we we do get it. it. Yeah. Um, it's better than before. Trust me. Yeah. I went the the first year uh, I was in Houston for Carnival. I don't know how to tell somebody that they was gray in our flag. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Say what? Just like the first year, the Patriots had them uniform with gray in it. Mm, yeah. And I don't make joke with my flag. Mm. Right. I don't make joke with the St. Kitts Nevis flag. Right. Mm. So, yeah, I don't know where they get that but Where from. they put it? Where they put the gray? <laughs> where, where they put I, it? <laughs> it I don't even care because as far as I was concerned, that is not. Right. Our, the, our the don't even, you can't even fit. And, and, and people, just like, I mean, I remember doing a show one time. Caribbean, Caribbean talented teen show here. And the show ready to start. And the St. Lucia, I was hosting the show. The St. Lucia contestant come up and say, uh-uh. Well, I, I'm not coming on that stage because you got the flag turned upside down. Mm. Mm-hmm. Right. And so we had to turn off the light. Respect that. Pull down the flag. Respect And put it back up um, mm-hmm. in order for, for the show to um, proceed. So, Respect that. St. Lucia? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Who put the St. Lucia flag upside down? Well, somebody who obviously not then familiar with it. <laughs> yeah, it's like it <laughs> don't even look right. Forward. Right. <laughs> we say because you can understand, like even if the flag back to there, even, like, if are, <laughs> even if this even if the flag back to front is still the same. So, <laughs> <laughs> so the, the fact that you get the Senusha flag Yo, right, I, I, that's like pure negligence, man. <laughs> I know, and and turning people's flag upside down. I guess, I guess for me later on in life, it kind of meant something because I lived in the Philippines. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man, it means. And they say every time something. the flag is turned upside down, that means there's war in the country. Yeah, yeah, right, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so yeah. interesting. The more you know. Anyway, anyway, <laughs> now we're finished. Yeah. <laughs> now you can look at the clock. Oh, I can. Yes. Oh. Okay. There okay. you go. <laughs> So, so we, uh, thank you for joining us here on Island yeah, Team. Yeah, I had it, a, it, was, it was it was truly an inspiring and and, and educational conversation. Yeah, I, I I enjoyed it as well too. I mean, you know, You're like you had a choice. There's, but he said like he had a choice. No, there's a there's a there's a story to be told, um, and I don't mind um, telling it. Sometimes, mm. you know, people are not going to be happy. Mm-hmm. Um, but, hey. Can't please yeah, everybody. Yeah, yeah, Shut yeah. up and sing. If you... <laughs> <laughs> Shut up and sing. Hush your mouth. Hush your mouth and sing. No, hush your mouth. Hush your mouth. Hush your mouth. Hush your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> it was a pleasure, guys. I, yes. I enjoyed the tea. 
um, you know, it was a little hot at some times. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. None was spilled though. Oh, really? No, 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 oh, no. Everything no, was no. consumed and digested. Yes. And now we'll have good ball moments for the rest of the afternoon. <laughs> 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 We've come to the end of our show. <laughs> <laughs> on, on that note. <laughs> it is Tuesday and we're going to American Bakery to get some pastries. <laughs> Right, Jade? That's really yes, Jade. I want. Jade, you could leave. Yeah, <laughs> How are we yeah, going? You, Jade, you could leave the, the building? Yes. You look listening to them. <laughs> Just one. And back us here. Just one. I don't know who's listening to Gaff. Oh. 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 <laughs> because Gaff says he's a liar, but are we listening to radio? <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand. How are we going to get this done? Gaff is like, we're big as Oh, but I believe Gaza doesn't be listening to radio all day and then just work at night. Oh, <laughs> makes sense. I should ask you if, you, if, if you're the same. Well, <laughs> Lord. when you invest in something, you got to make sure, you have to that make sure it's, it's done yeah, right. It's running, so yeah. right. Continue listening, God. Continue listening, God. Big up council one time. We enjoy it. <laughs> anyway, we leave it. Have a great day and don't forget. You can't be everybody cup of tea because you is not a mug. <laughs>